Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome, my name is Stephen Kariungi, and uh, today uh, we are going to continue with the topic of classification one, and specifically, I would want us to discuss the external features of plants and animals that are used for classification. So it is important to ask ourselves which are the external features that are used during the classification of plants and animals. So we'll start with the plants. And we say that uh, uh, in plants, the following features are used. A, we have what we call the, the simple plants, the plants that do not have uh, very complex structures, such as the moss, the moss plant, the liverworts, and so on and so forth. So those ones we classify based on the presence of rhizoids, uh, based on the presence of seta, or the, the filament, and also the capsule. So those ones are, we use the rhizoids. Rhizoids look like roots, but they are not true roots. The presence of seta, seta is a filament that emerges above the surface and capsule. These ones are used in mosses and liverworts. So those are the structures that we use. If you go to another category of plants, uh, there are some plants that we use structures called the sori, uh, the fronts, and rockies. These are some structures that are found in a, a little bit more advanced plants, such as used in ferns, the fern plants. But the most common feature that we are very familiar with, of course, the, the first two will come across them much later when we do classification number two. Uh, but uh, the most common ones of the higher plants that we have we use the leaves, we use the stem, the roots, we even use the fruits and seeds. These ones are used in flowering plants, the higher plants that we have are the ones that we refer to them as flowering plants. So they basically use these as their external features. Um, let's also look at uh, which structures we use in animals. In animals, the following features. Are used in classification uh, in some uh, animals we use the wings beaks and scales in birds those are the features we use to classify birds uh, we use uh, scales oh the number of limbs or legs in reptiles. We use the scales, the fins, and gills 
in fish. In mammals, we use uh, the mammary glands. We use the number of limbs. We use the fur or hair. We even use uh, an external ear in mammals. Some animals we use uh, locomotory structures. These ones are mainly used in microorganisms, the microscopic organisms. Which structures do they have for locomotion? So basically, uh, those are some of the structures that we use when you are studying classification. So the structures that we use in plants only apply to the plants. Other structures are more suitable when we are classifying the animals. And that's why we use them accordingly in that case. Uh, the other thing uh, that I want us to uh, discuss is the importance of classification. We are asking ourselves, why is classification important? And uh, first of all, we say that uh, uh, classification enables grouping of organisms based on similarities and differences. So it helps or you can say that uh, classification enables grouping of living organisms based on similarity in characteristics another importance of um, classification uh, also enables grouping organisms for reference, even for future reference. That's for future documentation, for record keeping. It also helps arrange information in an orderly manner. And this is to avoid chaos and confusions, which would arise if no classification was done. Uh, lastly, number D, it helps us to understand the evolutionary relationships, the evolutionary relationships, that is ancestry, ancestry of living organisms. 
where did these organisms come from? So that is basically a very important uh, aspect. Uh, the next thing that uh, we're going to do is to have an assignment based on what we have learned. And the first question, Those are two questions. Identify the features used for classification of plants. And number two, give four reasons why classification is necessary. So we'll stop there until the next lesson. Goodbye.